You and what character got totally done dirty? You know what? It could only be Sam Fisher, right? Yeah. You know, Sam Fisher, one of my most beloved video game protagonists. I love the Splinter Cell series. I've loved it since I was but a nine-year-old boy when Splinter Cell Chaos Theory came out. I remember playing that and Pandora Tomorrow. I actually played Chaos Theory before I played Pandora Tomorrow, so when I went back and played Pandora Tomorrow, I was like, this is still good, it's not, it's not Chaos Theory good. You can do the upside down shoot. But I love those Tom Clancy games so much, those classic ones, that kind of golden period for Ubisoft back when it was like um, Rainbow Six, uh, you had like Vegas, Vegas 2 as well. You had all the, go the old Ghost Recon games, the intersecting, interlocking, cool, post-90s military what fiction nonsense. It was a golden age. Um, and then uh, Sam Fisher went away for a while, which was a big shame. We had Splinter Cell Blacklist, where uh, Michael Ironside was replaced by yes. Eric Johnson. Yes. Um, so the iconic voice of the character went away for a wee bit, which was unfortunate. Um, and then we all thought that we were going to get some more Splinter Cell stuff after that, and then it didn't happen. And then they brought they brought Sam back, but you know you know how they they brought him back as an old old man. As an old old man, and you know it's still really cool seeing like a mid fifties Sam Fisher doing the rounds. I'm, I have no problem with that. I think that's really cool. The coolest action heroes are all in their fifties, as we all know. Sure. Um, and they just brought him back in a bunch of random like Ubisoft mobile titles, and then he was in Rainbow Six Siege. Like, I, I was pretty hyped to have Sam Fisher in Rainbow Six Siege, but he didn't have his iconic outfit on, and he was also called Zero. Zero. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Just call, him, just call him Sam. It's his name. It's yeah. Sam Fisher. And now we're getting a remake of the original Splinter Cell from Ubisoft, which I don't really have much faith in. Sorry. Um, and it just continues to make me think that, like, Ubisoft don't understand how special Sam Fisher was. He could have been their big mascot, and instead they've just kind of pushed him to the side and turned him into generic military man, which just isn't what he's about. You know, Sam Fisher's a cool dude. I want the the. Oh, it's the best noise. No, sorry, hang on. Very I good. want that. I want some cool stabby stabby action and a few, you know, Spies versus Mercs. I want to yell at someone in Spies versus Mercs as Sam Fisher. I want to snap a neck upside down. Yep. Yeah. Upside down neck snapping. <laughs> a character that I thought got done dirty actually is Cloud Strife, which might seem a little bit weird. This is definitely a personal perspective thing, but everyone always sees Cloud as the proto, and he did inspire a lot of these sort of like big hair, big sword, tragic backstory characters in JRPGs. But there's way more to him than just being kind of stoic and miserable. Like in the original Final Fantasy VII, he's got zingers, like, and he does some really goofy stuff. Like he rides a dolphin up a radio tower, and yeah, okay, it's aged poorly, but like they put him in a dress because they thought it'd be funny and he gets to do funny things. And he's also a loser as well. Like he's not just this cool man with big sword. Yeah, look at me. He fails in his own backstory. That's like a big part of his character arc. So it's really weird by the time of like Advent Children, which is the CGI film that takes place afterwards, where his character arc just seems to have just been completely reset. And he's just like a pudding faced, straight mouth, stoic, miserable, nothing to him. The most boring man alive. It's like, that's not Cloud. That's not the Cloud that I remember. It's like the fans just like went, he's angsty and that's all he is. And Square looked at that and went, yeah, sure, we're just going to run with it. Because he was even that in like Kingdom Hearts. He had like a demon wing and bandages. And I was like, where's the fun? Like Cloud was way more than that. He wears purple for goodness sake. He's not just this moody such and such. So I'm really glad that Final Fantasy VII Remake actually got that right for me. That was the thing that I was the most worried about. Cloud's writing and they did pull it off. So fair play to them. Because yeah, I just don't know. I feel like... A lot of people sort of pigeonhole Cloud as being just Mr. Angst. But in the original game, he's got jokes. He's got a bit more dimension to him. I don't know what the hell happened. Scott. Hi. Which video game character got Dundiddly diddly dirty. Dun diddly Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, tell, I'll give you an honourable mention before I get to the main course, which is Cam Clark's Liquid Ocelot. The, the whole idea being that Cam Clark's the voice of Liquid Snake in the Metal Gear games, dude was going to, when theory, come back from Metal Gear Solid 4, the whole idea being that Liquid Snake, the character, was taken over by the arm of, of Ocelot, Revolver Ocelot. I know five people care about this, but it was a big deal back in 2008 that we were going to get Cam Clark to come back and be the ultimate villain, and then it wasn't him, it was Patrick Zimmerman, it was the voice of Ocelot, which I guess made sense that, you know, it's taken over his being and everything, but the Japanese version, the other regions, got the actual Liquid Snake voice. Where's Cam Clark's Liquid Ocelot? We never got it. We never got the proper, I got all the recessive genes. We didn't get that voice. 
and that's it's all I wanted. Outrage. It was an absolute outrage. Ring the tabloids. Um, but yeah, also, I want to throw in, uh, as my main course, Dante from Devil May Cry, mainly because dude's been done dirty twice. Now, he's doing all right at the minute because Devil May Cry 5 was incredible, and the game played incredibly well. The version of Dante in there looks the sort of like a um, like Kurt Cobain sort of meets the original Dante style dude. He's a little bit older. He's very, very stylish. I love him. But back in Devil May Cry 2, that was the original time that Capcom were like, we don't know what we're doing. We kind of something kind of worked. The original game was a spin-off from RE4. Let's just try some stuff. And then Devil May Cry 2 sort of aged him up and sort of changed the character and changed the tone and whatever, and it didn't work. DMC 3 then saved him. And then DMC 4, he was like the second character in his own game because they brought in Nero. And then in DMC, DMC, Devil May Cry 2013, they rebooted it again and changed him all together. That's the one everyone hated. And the franchise just went away for a while. And now, like I said, he's all right in DMC 5, but that dude has been done dirty for like 20 years straight. DMC Dante done dirty may cry yeah. devil. To be fair, one of the difficulty modes was always called Dante Must Die. I didn't realize that was the notice board they pinned up in Capcom trying to figure out what to do with that franchise. A. A. <laughs> Horrible. Joe. Yes. Which video game character got done dirty? You done dirty. So, id Software, famous mostly for Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, um, you know, all their shooters, they basically invented the first person shooter. And Wolfenstein and Doom gone from strength to strength, ups and downs, you know, um, and, you know, they, they both had like really good soft reboots in Wolfenstein The New Order and Doom 2016. Both of those even had sequels that weren't quite as good. But the franchise from id that no one ever talks about, which came before, is Commander Keen, right? Commander Keen? Commander Keen. Who's he? Commander Keen was their first sort of big character. Uh, he was created to, uh, to kind of prove that smooth scrolling on PCs was possible. No, it had never really been done before. So he represents, just like Wolfenstein did and just like Doom did, his games represent a huge technical leap for PC. Right, you know, we didn't have Mario on the PC, we didn't have Sonic on the PC, we got Commander Keen instead, right? And he's just been left, you know, after after they decided to move on to Wolfenstein and Doom, Commander Keen, there were no more games after about 1991. And I was obsessed with that series as a child. You know, I was so obsessed with Commander Keen, I want more, he's always got, got this weird little place in my heart, right? Because he's got a pogo stick to help him jump higher, Joe, you know, it's guy, got... This man does not exist! He does exist! I'll Commander show you later! Keen does not he, exist! He's got his pogo stick to jump higher, you know, he's got the dope fish, everyone knows the dope fish, comes he's from Commander Keen. <laughs> yes, they are! And there aren't any more, but in 2019, there was a new Commander Keen game announced. No, there was not. Right? Bethesda announced it at, I think, E3, I think in 2019, maybe 2018, and it was a free-to-play mobile climbing game. Come on, man! You know, give him a proper game! And then, the you know, the reaction to that reveal was, like, so bad that they just never bothered releasing it anyway. Commander Keen is such an icon that there was a pack for Doom Eternal where you could dress up as Commander Keen, you could wear his Green Bay Packers helmet and his purple t-shirt. He even had his pogo stick, right, and his funny little blaster gun. And as far as I'm concerned, that's because the Doom guy is Commander Keen. Commander Keen is Doom guy? Commander Keen is Doom guy, right? The only way to play Doom Eternal is with the Commander Keen skin, because he's Commander Keen. Commander Keen! Commander Keen! Commander Keen! Commander Keen! Commander Keen! Commander Keen. <laughs> oh dear.